me now is a friend of the show, Dr. Alan Mendoza. We love getting on. Director of the Henry Jackson Society. Alan, give us a little background. What's going on? Is this just, you know, mischievous Russia turning the gas pipe on and off and, and causing uh, this, this, you know, tremendous crisis, basically, across Europe? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a mixed bag, Alex. Um, always love to be on, of course, with you. But um, what, what you've got here is, firstly, the um, surging demand that's come from economies worldwide because of, of course, the uh, return from lockdowns. Uh, energy consumption was very low during lockdowns. Now, as industry whirs back into action, it's gone up. You had a very cold winter last winter. That depleted stores. Uh, they weren't replenished properly over the summer because of the increased demand. And we now, of course, face another winter coming in and the supply has not increased. And you're right to bring in the Russian question, because although the Russians haven't, so, so to speak, turned off the gas, they haven't turned it on either. We know Russia's got huge reserves of gas and is capable of increasing flow to the market. And yet, it hasn't done so. Now, just uh, yesterday, Vladimir Putin intimated finally that the Russians uh, were intending, Gazprom was intending to increase supply. And that's, by the way, why the price has fallen quite dramatically overnight. But there is the suggestion that has all been tied towards energy politics. The Russians are desperate for a pipeline called Nord Stream 2 to be approved in Germany that pumps a gas straight from Russia to Germany. It's currently in regulation, it's currently being awaited, and the Russians are suggesting if that were hurried on, more gas would be available. So to that extent, we're definitely having games being played on gas supply right now. Yeah, I mean, it sounds to me, China's gobbling up all the energy that the world has to offer. Russia could help out and is using it for their own interests. Isn't it about time we really figured out how to make energy here to be self-sufficient and potentially become an energy exporter? Because it's apparent that gives us incredible political leverage around the world. Well, for a long time, we did have it, don't forget. I mean, we had, you know, oil and gas reserves, significant oil and gas reserves that made us self-sufficient. Those, of course, have been running out for some time. And now the challenge is on for this country to develop uh, renewable energy or other forms of energy that can uh, not only supply our needs, but potentially could be used for export as well. And you're quite right to make this a, a national security issue. It is clearly a problem if your supply is being controlled by uh, non-democratic countries who at any point could decide they don't want to supply you with, uh, with the requisite energy any longer. And that leaves you at the mercy of you know, either having no energy or having to do what they want internationally. And that is a huge problem as we've seen uh, in the past few years. So, but uh, you're quite right, the government needs to get ahead of the game here, have an energy security strategy and say by X year, the UK will be uh, self-sufficient at the very least, and hopefully an exporter, because that will bring more money in and, of course, will uh, make the country safer as well. And were we right to drop um, the, the Chinese involvement in building big nuclear power stations? Because at one point we were discussing that as our future. There were six planned, three, you know, were for the birds. Um, the three remaining had involvement from Chinese companies, and essentially that's sort of going down the plug hole as well. Well, yeah, well, absolutely right. In this case, why would you want any Chinese government linked to organization having access to nuclear power in this country? What you've just said about Russia rings absolutely true about China, the idea being that we would be at the mercy, should the Chinese government have a beef with the British government, at the mercy of their companies who could say, we're turning off your energy just like that. The idea that in today's world that we can afford to have potentially hostile countries and non-democracies occupying key areas of national infrastructure is as much for the birds as those three power stations that have disappeared off the map in that way. And the reality here is that we have to be incredibly careful in the 21st century about who we trust with our energy supplies and our reserves. If we wish to be a free, independent nation, trading with the world, acting in the world, we have to have control of that supply and make sure that it is only allies who are involved in our energy production needs and not potential enemies. I never thought I'd find myself asking, can we trust France? Because it seems today they're saying, well, you know, we're having a hard time over there in the UK. We want to fish your waters. And if you don't, um, if you don't back down on that, then we're also going to turn off energy heading to the UK. Well, look, the French and we have a long and twisted history. We're best of friends and best of enemies at the same time. Um, often, you know, uh, literally one following the other. Uh, can we trust the French? Look, the French are a commercial nation. They do this very well, by the way. You want to see an example of a country that puts commercial interests 
front and centre of what it does, the French are it. You know, does that mean they're unreliable? Well, if that is the case, we ought to be looking elsewhere in other places. And I think you've seen, obviously, the recent defence agreement uh, with Australia and the US that we were looking not with the French, who are upset to be left out, but in other areas. So the reality is that the French wish to show that they are unreliable or could be unreliable, they will find themselves locked out of this market. It's still a big market, but it's a close market. Then they should be more careful about how they behave and the suggestions they make to the British government, because it could cost them dearly as we look to diversify our energy supply going forwards. Alan, thank you so much. Always love when you come and give us an explainer. You get right to the bones of the problem. The wonderful Dr. Alan Mendoza, of course.